Hi, yeah, definitely. I'm Tim, uh, Tim Banzimer, and uh, I come from Germany. I entered the blockchain space uh, like in the middle of last year after working as a consultant uh, in the IT security space, having an infrastructure background. And I think uh, after recognizing the potential uh, from the blockchain space, uh, I decided that I want to transform my career and want to dedicate my time uh, and my passion uh, to accelerate the blockchain space. That sounds awesome. So. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about, about the projects you're currently working on? Yes. So what, what we are mainly doing is supporting business development, uh, community outreach and connecting the worlds. Because we have like uh, the old established industries, we have the public sector and we have all the new uh, startups coming up uh, and the communities. Getting that connected and adding value to the, to the ecosystem. This is what we are working on. So this is what Inblockio does? Yeah, this is what Inblockio does. And we, and we hope, obviously, we hope to uh, accelerate uh, the incubation of startups and good ideas and help to uh, uh, assess those uh, ideas uh, in a professional manner uh, to uh, uh, support those projects which add the most value for society as well. So this is, I think, really important as well, not to forget. Sounds great, sounds great. So can you tell me a little bit about your specific role within Inblockio? Yes, um, I, I'm the guy who gets things started, I would say. Um, I'm a networker, obviously, <laughs> and uh, I get people connected and um, try to build up potential, right? So the potential uh, that teams can execute together. For example, at the moment we are in the preparation for, the, um, for a hackathon uh, in uh, April uh, in Groningen. And we signed up for solving the GDPR uh, compliance challenge for the energy sector. Uh, we will see how this will turn out, but this is this translates directly into self-sovereign identities and how uh, people can um, own their data and control their data. And I think the self-sovereign identity and the identity topic itself is one of the most challenging and most one of the most important ones to enable the blockchain space as well. So what do you think about the blockchain community and the Ethereum community in specifically? Uh, do you have some thoughts about um, the yeah. way community is at this yeah. point? What I, what I really like on the Ethereum community is the spirit how uh, I think it came into existence. Uh, I see uh, a lot of people try to uh, really make a positive social impact. Uh, I mean, uh, we had a talk from, from Bob as well today and, uh, you know, speaking about it's not that trivial. We shouldn't just focus on simple use cases, but on the real impact we have. I think we have all a responsibility if we have knowledge uh, and we have access to resources uh, and we are privileged to uh, you know, be in Europe, have peace and work together on projects, we have a responsibility as well. So I, I see that the Ethereum community uh, is one uh, which has a really positive uh, like, like resonance with me as well, uh, where I see a lot of uh, alignments with the old hacker communities, like from the CCC space as well, and people really try to make a positive impact. Oh, that's great, that's great. So, um, so us we here in Chronologic, so what we do is we deal with, uh, with time-sensitive things about the blockchain, right? Yeah. So uh, what we're working currently on is the Ethereum alarm clock, which allows you to schedule transactions at a, at a future point in time. So um, what do you think about this idea and how do you think uh, this could impact the Ethereum community? At the moment, we are in a time where we are still build like the protocols, right? So we try to get a scalable blockchain. We try to get like the critical things working, like the Ethereum name system, Swarm, all the other stuff. Obviously, uh, time-based transactions is one of the critical infrastructure services we need, uh, as it was in the past, right? Like the name, uh, like the like the time uh, systems um, we had, like in the Web 2.0, they are critical for any system we run you always have to question, okay, do I have a sync in time? If the time is not synced in the network, if the time is not synced um, in a, in a, with the computers, you will have problems with the certificates, with communications, with all the other stuff. Obviously time and uh, time uh, which is based on uh, scheduled transactions, in this case, like with uh, the infrastructure you provide, is a critical part we need uh, to enable the ecosystem. That's great. So uh, can you give us an example of when you would use these kinds yes. of scheduled transactions? Yes, obviously, if you do automation, it is uh, well crucial 
that you can, for example, say, I want to automate my payrolls. Okay, that's like the, the easy thing, right? Uh, but also other things like I want to uh, um, have a, a smart contract run to assess a specific situation. So everything what is uh, based on maintenance, for example. Okay, I want to check a specific thing every like four weeks, every two hours whatsoever. Okay, here we need an alarm clock, right? Um, obviously, there, there are a lot of things. Also running uh, and executing smart contracts to order something. Okay, I want to order uh, a taxi tomorrow morning and I want to do that with a smart contract. I don't know if this is really a feasible example, but I think uh, you know you need to, to put it somewhere in to have it in a smart contract, right? These are great examples. I, I, I definitely see that it just overlaps with a lot of applications and is a critical part of infrastructure we need. You too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so do you have a question for the blockchain and the Ethereum community as well? Do you have a message that you would like to? Oh, that's that's an awesome question, <laughs> and it's not an easy one. <laughs> Uh, I think we shouldn't uh, trivialize too much. What we are building here is the foundation for the new internet. And we are we're all criticizing like what was happening with the Web 2.0 and that it was flawed and it is flawed. Uh, if we want to build a solid foundation, sometimes it's important to step back and look at the requirements, what we need to have a scalable, secure solution and how we build the infrastructure pieces in a way that they can last long and that they can really scale uh, as we need them to scale uh, to become uh, the new internet, uh, the new foundation for humankind, like a global uh, network. Definitely, this is the message. That let's do that, be really, be really diligent with that. And the other thing is um, never forget the responsibility we share uh, with having uh, access to that technology, with building that technology. Uh, and it is our responsibility uh, uh, to make it a fairer system for everybody involved uh, with more transparency. Uh, I hope with more open science as well, right? Uh, so, so I'm really excited. I have a really positive feeling that we have great opportunities ahead of us. That's a great message. Okay, thanks. Thank uh, you. Thanks, Tim. Awesome.